gave him the gun. No. No, you didn't, Chloe said, gasping with fright. Oh, yeah. I told him about the school and those lovely kids and that teacher. The rest of them, even the principal as well. Yeah, those poor little children. Woohoo. But it's alright. At least he had a taste of something. At least he got the violence that he was always wanting. Daphne said in a malice tone. Chloe couldn't believe this confession coming from the lips of his own, of her own cousin. Son of a bitch! I can't believe you! Chloe cried out. She charged towards him. But the infestations were already holding her back. I really hate doing this to you, cousin, but I'm afraid this is going to have to come to an end. I'll do it in the same manner as you were killed with, Daphne said. Oh, crimson bullets, I think you are needed, Daphne said. Immediately, she came along. She pulled out a gun and pointed it straight into Chloe's direction. Chloe was really horrified. Oh no, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die right here, Chloe thought. Then, as the gun was being triggered, the bullet went straight for Chloe, but then it stopped in midair. Daphnis couldn't believe it. He glanced over at Monaco Kojima. What happened? Daphnis said. I don't know, Monaco said. My bullet. Stopped. Chloe couldn't believe it. Did I do that? She said softly. She looked at the bullet and then looked straight down, and the bullet went down too. Amazed by this, Chloe began to laugh. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can control bullets. I can stop them in midair. Chloe said. Then she looked at Daphne with a smug look. <laughs> Who's invincible now? Shaken with anger, Daphne called out, I'm gonna pull you apart! He shouted. Just before he could command anything else, Barnaby sliced at the infestations with his next powers and freed Chloe. However, Daphnis punched Chloe so hard that she stumbled backwards and flew out of a window. Barnaby tried to rescue her, but couldn't catch her in time. Barnaby was so shocked and so angry that he took it out on Daphnis. Daphnis managed to fight back, but boy, was Barnaby really upset. Fighting back, there was no hope that Daphnis would win. And Barnaby took him down in a flash. Barnaby stood over Daphnis. Why? You bastard. Why take it out on me? You love the girl, huh?
said Daphnis in a weak tone. No, I don't. I don't even have time to date women. But the only reason I'm close to her is because she somehow reminds me of myself. What? You? Don't make me laugh, Daphne said. It's true. She's been through a lot lately. So have I. Somebody had been messing with my memories. I couldn't even find out who actually killed my parents. And you have to go and ruin her life. I am not going to let that happen again. Not to someone else. Definitely not you interfering. Barnaby said, and now look at what she did. Throw her out the window like that? She is... I'm alive, Chloe said from behind. Barnaby turned around. Chloe. Ugh. Relax. I'm fine. I'm alive. I'm okay. Barnaby couldn't believe it. You can fly. Of course I can. You didn't know that? You broke the fall and you flew, didn't you? Oh yeah, I did. Daphnis looked at the floor with horror. No, no, it's coming for me. Just then, some sort of red Venus flytrap came and swallowed up Daphnis. But before it can do that, Daphnis was trying to run away, but he knew he couldn't. No! No! I sold my soul for this! No! Help me! Chloe and Barnaby watched in horror. Monaco Kojima was so scared that she managed to leave the room. Daphnis tried to cry out in pain, but the sharp teeth began biting and tearing out his flesh as he screamed with terror. And then all of his body was now dissolved inside the mouth of the monstrous Venus flytrap. Once that monster was gone, Chloe couldn't believe it. It's over. I can't believe it. It's over, she said. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, I don't know when to uh, thank you or or maybe take you with me to um to a night in Paris. <laughs> Chloe said with a nervous laugh. But her laugh turned into tears of joy. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't believe it's over. Yeah, it is. But tell me something, Dorothy. Are you really going to go out without any silver or red ruby slippers? He pulled out something. <gasps> oh. Chloe's gasp. These weren't any red shoes or silver shoes. They were all combined in one. Chloe couldn't believe it. A mischievous look on her face. Oh, thank you, Bunny. I must say, you are quite a handy guy. 
<laughs> but hey, tell me something. Did you really think I wouldn't know about this? Chloe replied. She was holding up something. I believe you dropped this. Barnaby couldn't believe it. Then looked at Chloe. So, you think I would carry around that? Barnaby said. What? No, I wouldn't. Let's just say this is a family heirloom. Something I would treasure. Not just by this, but the memories. So don't get anything wrong with that. You got it? Chloe, Barnaby said. <laughs> I heard you the first few times when you called me Chloe, but thank you. Now that's more like it. Chloe remarked. The two of them left the big building, unknown to them that this wasn't over just yet. Thank you so much for listening and watching. I'll see you guys next time.